Greetings. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for being with us today. Uh, I am humbled, honored, and uh, I don't want to get over gregarious about it, but we're super happy to be here at Burke's Barracuda in Clearwater, Florida, uh, the Harley Davidson dealer, and uh, broadcasting live uh, from the mezzanine overlooking the store. It's been pretty awesome. This place is epic. I had no idea. So, uh, uh, welcome everybody. Thanks for spending a little bit of time with us today. Uh, I know a lot of you have been super excited to hear about what's going on. And um, so again, thank you for joining and spending some time with us. We have uh, a, a whole bunch of people coming on, but if there's some questions and you care to post them in the Q&A, we're not going to let you talk, but we'll let you post them. And so we'll get through as many as possible. Um, the uh, uh, catalyst for all this, I have to give credit to Chris Davino, who had uh, uh, judiciously introduced me to David McKillop, who's uh, two seats to my left here at the roof of the Soho House, I don't know, seven, eight years ago, something like that. And then uh, he he recently, uh, I think we got an echo on it. Uh, he, um, uh, Chris said, hey, these guys are doing out on TVs. I know you are one. So why don't you... Um, see what's, what's going on and see if the Family Office Insights community would be interested in investing and participating. I will tell you that it's called Outlaw TV, but I've come to learn and appreciate that it's more than that. It's a community. Um, and so it's not just content and interesting stuff that our friends here and uh, people who you most likely have known or heard from in some other way. Uh, um, it's about... Uh, uh, rugged individualism, if I could say that. Um, and uh, so uh, so uh, we look forward to sharing with you today. We just have a short time, just less than an hour, um, but we're going to make sure that everybody can get in touch and I'll be speaking with you post-webinar and make sure we fill you in with all the details. So with that, um, <clears throat> David introduced me to uh, the gentleman to my left. And before I cut my hair, I looked just like him, except... Um, I was a little heavier. I could look at Yeah. Okay. Uh, and so uh, with that, we're going to just go down the road here and uh, chat a little bit about each person's perspective on Outlaw TV and uh, open up for questions throughout. So make sure that you post them as they can come on um, and then uh, uh, take it from there. So with that, Ed, thank you for being here. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having us. And we're excited about. Uh, being here at Burks Barracuda, OCC, uh, this facility is unbelievable. You really got to come to Clearwater, uh, Florida, and check it out. It's it's pretty magnificent. Uh, I handle uh, investor relations for Outlaw TV. Uh, so if you need a PPM or have questions, I'm easy to get a hold of uh, at ed at outlawtv.co. Uh, I'd be glad to... Uh, answer whatever you have uh, regarding what we're doing and where we're going. Uh, before I introduce you to our celebrities, uh, Jesse James, Paul Sr., and Billy Lane, uh, who I'm really honored to be a partner with, and, and uh, it's just an incredible uh, experience. Uh, I do want to introduce you to the gentleman that's the president of Outlaw TV. Uh, he comes from the television background. Uh, he's been in television forever. Uh, his uh, credentials go far and wide with Duck Dynasty, Ice Road Truckers, Pawn Stars, uh, Monster Garage. Uh, the list goes on of everything that he's done. He's an Emmy Award winning producer uh, and the president of Outlaw <laughs> TV. And that's David McKellar. Thank you. Well, thank you all for, for joining. You know, um, I'm not going to talk a lot because I really want to take the time so you guys can hear from the people whose idea this was. <laughs> These are the, the passionate ones. Um, I will say one quick question will probably come up is like, why would anybody want to launch a TV project in today's media market? Um, and the simple answer to that is I think this type of disruption we're in actually is a perfect time to launch something new and different. And Outlaw TV is very new and different. It's very personal, it's a community. Um, and you'll hear from these gentlemen. Uh, I would also like to say that I have personally worked with every single one of these gentlemen across multiple shows and multiple networks. 
Um, and uh, this is a rare opportunity for a bunch of superstars to come back and, and do something for the community. And uh, at that, I'm going to turn it over to Billy. And then Paul's going to have a few words. And then Jesse's going to wrap it up. And he's going to show uh, a tape that uh, he produced, which kind of is the, uh, uh, it's our sizzle reel for the, for the channel. Uh, and uh, we'll take it from there. Hey, I'm Billy Lane from Chop Racing and uh, Sons of Speed Vintage Motorcycle Racing more recently. But I've known Jesse, I was thinking about it earlier, I've known Jesse half my life. Four or um, five years. Yeah, yeah. I've known him half my life. And I remember meeting Paul in the early 2000s. And, uh, you know, I mean, we all know each other. Uh, we met because of motorcycles, custom motorcycles in the custom motorcycle world. <clears throat> but we've remained friends over all these years because um, of the kind of people we are and our values and what we believe in, which is, I think, really key to the outlaw culture and to what outlaw TV wants to bring to you. And custom motorcycles has a long and storied history, and uh, we are going to be the future of it. You know, I mean, um, I had a, a wonderful and horrible romance with cable TV <laughs> and, um, in the past, and I know a couple of these guys may have also. But, um, you know, watching cable TV in a couple of years is going to be like, Going and using a phone booth when you have a cell a smartphone in your pocket. It's, you know, nobody's watching cable TV anymore. My, I have young kids, and my kids, you have a TV on the wall, and they're, they're not watching it. They're watching an app. They're watching something, you know, they might be on, a, on an iPad, or you can actually watch it on your TV too, I guess, but they're not watching program TV. So, um, you know, this is the future. And even though we've been here for, for many years, uh, you know, we're bringing the future because nobody else in the motorcycle world has had the, the brains or, the know how or the capability to do it. So I'm really excited about about being a part of that. And um, you know, I hope hope uh, a lot of people come I know a lot of people are gonna come join us because we were just talking a few minutes ago uh, with one of our friends in the room, you know, when we were doing this stuff on TV twenty years ago, twenty five years ago, a lot of the people that were watching us then were, were kids. You know, they were watching it with their dad and their mom and and now they're now they're adults and now they're the, the people that are walking in the dealership downstairs and buying these motorcycles. But a lot of them don't know how the parts of those motorcycles were made. You know, we're American craftsmen, and you know what we what we do. We're, we're lucky to be alive at the time. But what we do is mimicked worldwide. But they don't have the freedom like we have in the United States to make things and then you know to just make a handmade motorcycle and go ride it across the country. It, it's, you know, it's too restrictive, and we're really blessed to have that. And that's it's still a part of the wild west outlaw culture. That's a part of what we do that I think is what makes this whole thing so beautiful. So I'm going to defer to my friend over here, Paul Senior. Hi, I'm Paul Senior from Orange County Choppers. <clears throat> and um, so this is, I'm a very old school guy when it comes to uh, today's te modern technology. Well, <laughs> 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 Zoom, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, when Jesse texted me, he said, he said give this to the book. <laughs> you know, I don't understand it. So. I don't like it. I'm not just playing. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think this is a unique opportunity. Um, you know, Jesse was really the pioneer. Uh, and then shortly after that, um, you know, they, 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 they came to me. Uh, and and I think for all for everybody's background, there's a few problems you know, and I know that's you know I I, I kind of still feel about it that way that I ran a steel fabricator business for for thirty years. Uh, I've been around a lot more than, than these guys have, um, but I think it's you know we dealt with the with, with the cable TV and and uh, through all the years and a lot a lot of years I think. Uh, for me, it's probably 18 years or so that we did, did, did radio TV. And, uh, you know, I, I, I can't say that everything was uh, totally bad against it, but I think we more bad than the good. And to be able to get the opportunity, you know, it's like we talk, you know, like uh, when, you, when you have no control of what you're doing, um, you know, uh, Cable TV made me look like somebody that I'm really not, and 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 for years, you know, it's kind of like you know, you know, you don't really choose your own destiny. Uh, I think the opportunity now is that we we all get uh, that opportunity to 
be who we are, who we really are, is more than most excited about. And, uh, you know, I just think that, you know, the, the, the three of us have been around for quite some time now, and, and, and back then the industry was booming. Uh, it's 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 slowed off, and I think what's, what what Julie really was saying about the generation, you know, it's kind of like uh, it, there, there, there's third generations now from the people that that watch their show, and so that generation they didn't really get to see what it was all about, and this will give them the opportunity uh, to do that, and so I'm I'm excited about that. I'm excited about that too, but. Uh, I think it's going to be um, definitely uh, somewhat of a challenge. I think it's going to be uh, exciting and uh, unwilling. Awesome. Jesse, Jesse, Jesse. I'll tell you, <laughs> let, let me tell you tell you a little story about TV. So I came on uh, Discovery, went to all the motorcycle magazines in the late 1990s, and asked like. You know, we want to show a motorcycle get actually built, like how a bike gets built, start to finish, and like easy riders, hot bike, hot, hot rod bikes, American Iron, like five out of five say, oh, you got to go with Jesse. And so, uh, Discovery set producers and tried to get me to film, and I was already busy. I had a really good good business and stuff, you know, going, and I didn't really, I didn't see any value in it like stopping and letting a whole camera crew come into my shop. Like, what is that for? I had done a little bit of like, I, the only, I did a cable access show interview show with Art Levine. It was like the first TV show I ever did. And I just, it didn't really move the needle in my life. And so I reluctantly agreed. We filmed for better part of a year. <clears throat> and then 2000, I went up, luckily, a kid named Dave Eberts, whose dad's name is Jake Eberts. Dave produced the show, and his dad, Jake Eberts, if you know who he is, he has like 80 Academy Awards. Luckily, that guy edited the first show that I was ever on. And I remember, I mean, I think I'm a fucking hilarious motherfucker. <laughs> really, I'm like, on and off camera. Very, <laughs> very funny and witty, and I say all kinds of shit that make people laugh. But I had never seen myself in that context on TV. And I went and sat in on the editing bay with Jake Eberts the night before we sent the show to Discovery for the very first show. And I just sat there with my mouth open. I'm like, holy shit. I can't believe they're going to play this on television. <laughs> and like, like, I just couldn't, didn't really watch Discovery because it was all like dinosaurs and bugs and stuff like that. And this has me like talking about fighting and getting my ta hand tattooed and like, ready to fight the world and bikes and cops and all this stuff in one one hour special and i just was like i can't believe they're going to do it and they did it and it like you know changed the dynamic of discovery you know and sh you know path of least possible resistance you know we need to show every week so they bring on paul senior and do american chopper they bring on billy and do biker build up and i think just going back to that little bit of feeling i had when seeing something it's almost like you're not supposed to be seeing it. Like it feels like, oh shit, with a little illicit. Yeah, and, right? and I, yeah. I had that same feeling like when I was a kid, when cable TV first came, like select TV and on TV. And like, you could like, the cable box was just a box with a knob. And you just like clicked it to on. And then you could flip around, you could see like obscure porn late at night. <laughs> and like, but you could see all these movies and Disney stuff and everything. It's like, oh my God, you know, I'm used to watching the same, you know, monster, like regular antenna TV. So the feeling of that and the feeling of seeing myself, this is like why I want to create this because I want, I feel like everything is so cultivated, so dumbed down. And they, we've been under the thumb of like major networks for the best, like two decades. And I just want to give people the opportunity, like, hey, let's see our version of these stories and what we have going on. You know, we're used to letting people make decisions for us, all of us, including David, that really have no concept or idea of what our skill set is, what we do, what we're capable of. And I think we, you know, now we keep having these milestones, especially David and I, like, holy shit. We don't even have to ask permission. We can just get away. <laughs> you know, and it's, to me, that's the recipe for greatness. And that's to get the best. Like, 
we did this protocol video that you guys are going to see and these guys have used to be filmed one way one type of crew that whole it sucks because i started the whole reality tv but now it's morphed into like man-made manufactured reality tv they don't leave anything to question they don't wait out any drama they don't do anything and they even seen that so it makes me feel so good but they see the video man that's awesome like that's how I, all of them should be that's how every piece of content we do on this network i want it to be the best of the best you know we're telling visual stories you know we're not starting a youtube account where we're like hey everybody look i'm a star because i've downloaded it myself like you know, no, put some production value and stories and story writers and producers and directors of photography and all the best of the best in this. Then let us do what I do. Then let us make stuff and build things and create stuff. And I think it's a tree that has a lot of branches. And the one great thing about it, I think from an investor standpoint is like, you're looking at the only people in the world that can do this. Like it's not you know, everybody else could come up with the same idea, but they would never be able to pull off skill-wise, creativity-wise, like work, welding, building, anything. They won't be able to do what we do because most of the people other than us that would come up with that idea, they just grab the easiest possible thing. Like, Let's go to that shop. They're just around the corner. And it's easy and cheap. You know, they won't seek out the best like cable used to do. And that's what, you know, that's why these guys are, here with me. That's why David's here with me. Other than getting fired, you got me fired four times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I figured the best person to run this thing is someone that's going to stick his neck out and willing to lose his job to make the right decision. You know, and it ultimately, you know, billions of dollars have been made off of our backs, and I think it's time to do it ourselves and do it for the investors, and most of all. Eliminate all the middlemen. Just have it for the people that are buying a membership. Everybody that's paying like fifteen or twenty dollars a month, they're doing it. We're doing it for them. You know, they're they're paying it because they want to see us. They're not paying it because it's a basic cable package or something like that. It's like you know what what we want to do, and it's also like there's a lot of branches to this tree. We've rolled in high science which David and Ed would have been working on for a couple of years, which is a cannabis uh, oriented show, but they're doing it to try to, they were doing it to try to fit with the cable network. And I knew in the back of my mind, as soon as we started talking about Outlaw TV, I'm like, oh, that show's going to end up on here because <laughs> they're not, you we're know, end up having a show of nothing. <laughs> once you get that, once you get that little taste of creative freedom, like you're not going to want to give it back up. And I think it's, it's perfect cannabis is legal in this country a lot of people are doing it a lot of networks want to stomp on its nuts because networks are being funded by big pharmaceutical companies that's fine that's advertising but from someone that wants to tell true stories and everything you can't really you can't have both you know you can't have advertisers controlling content and, and, and networks try to be uh, pretend to be authentic and what what, what we are authentic, <laughs> you guys are authentic, yeah. and we can maintain our authenticity. Yeah, that's the network trying to pretend or make us or create yeah. an, uh, an illusion, an illusion of authenticity. I think yeah. to a person, people understand that oftentimes what they see and they learn to accept it is driven by the dollars that are paid by the advertisers, and some of the content, if not a lot, is being squelched. So that money, just I mean, well, just guiltily pleasure speaking. I just want to see Pond Stars put in a weed dispensary. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've got this guitar. I'm a simple man. I just, think, I just think I have a friend that has a dispensary up in Sacramento, and geez, it's just like a shit show every day. And like, I want to, I think that's a great TV concept. You know, I think it's great for our network. Yeah, we can do the intellectual like data side of it, like telling the story of medical and all that stuff, but I kind of want to see stoners fight it out, you know? <laughs> you know, at the risk of being a little metaphysical, I think that, you know, I don't know a lot of things, in fact, very little, but what I do know is one, to a person, when authenticity is demonstrated, even though you may not know it's there, you feel it. Yeah, right. It's very clear. Audience have an amazing book. Yeah. Well, look, yeah. we we've got it. I've got a track record on this whole concept because 
when the first documentary aired, we wanted to start a fan club site, but I didn't like the, like, I don't know. I don't like people, oh, look at all my fans. I just have never been that way. So I made a fan club site that was my dog, Cisco. And I called the fan club site Chopper Dog. And it was all fans of the dog. Well, we have 20,000 people paying nine ninety five a month from 2000 until 2006. So pre-social media, pre-YouTube or anything like that, we, did, I we had shop cans, which the guys just like pull it down and like, <laughs> sounds and, like home. And <laughs> produce, our, produce our own video content, our own photos. It was a whole sub-society. And this is what I want to recapture with that. And I, it kind of, paywall sites got swallowed up by free social media. But what also got swallowed up is is the freedom, because I mean, honestly, look, if I was Mark Zuckerberg, and people were making millions of dollars using my servers, my format, all my data, everything, I'm, I'm gonna want to charge them. You know, I'm not gonna want to. I want to limit their content. It's op, it's just a business. So that's why we need to go back, all three of us, and do our own thing, and take it right to the consumer that wants it. And I, I really think like. The timing is perfect for it because it's if we tried to do this five years ago a lot of these social media platforms and youtube would have been in the height of it now i think you're seeing like the downfall of it so it's all going to be you're going to be paying 25 cents for every like every you know it's all going to be monetized to keep that big company 15 percent growth and like and i think also consumers are looking at the, the streaming services now not as uh, places that they want to watch and identify with, they're looking at them as utilities. You know, they look at it, it's along there and they sit down and pay their bills. It's the gas company, it's the electric company, it's, you know, all the pluses. And, and, and I think the problem with their churn rate is that they just have no connection to the brand. And I think what we're trying to create here and what Jesse's created. It's not about the content. It's yeah. about a paid platform and put the minimum of whatever you can do on there just to keep those 900,000, 900 million subscribers. They're not thinking like, oh, if we produce, I'm in the other side of the concept where if we make something really, really, really good, like, you know, intriguing to watch and it piques your curiosity and it makes you like run right out to your garage and like, shit, I'm gonna buy a welder. You know, if that's, if we do that kind of content, the people will come, They're, you know, I don't think. I and think they'll stay. Now, for, you can see the, uh, I mean, David Zavok, we just talked about, who's a good friend. <laughs> only only because I called him at two in the morning one time, told him to get fucked and he did a shoot and he died out of the whole time. <laughs> but I got fired. There, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> but they, they're not every new movie that comes out on netflix now is a dubbed over movie from you know it's true somewhere else yeah some other language why yeah. are they doing that yeah. it's inexpensive they want to get the new stuff out there as fast and as cheaply as possible to keep retaining subscribers and i don't want to think that way i want everything in quality I like the old good godzilla movies were the, the the sinking up of the lips and the words that yeah. like it's crazy <laughs> right yeah but i think you know it's just I mean, I'm not smart enough to know I can't do this. So that's why I'm going to try. So at the risk you of, know, of right, you know, this is membership driven. We're, we're not trying to sell you a subscription. Uh, we want you to become a member. We want you to become an outlaw with us. There's benefits to it. You'll get gifts in the mail uh, from these three guys. Also social media aspect. Of, and we'll keep, we're going to have to keep for each show, Billy's show, Paul's show, my stuff. The high science stuff will have separate message boards so you can go and engage you can buy merch if you like them you can go everybody and it's like everybody all inclusive i don't want to send anybody anybody else social media will use for a little bit it's just a funnel to get people to our site but really i don't want to post any content i don't want i want to take all of this away from social media you know i want us to be the only ones that own all of this and keep the people you know like Imagine watching a show on Netflix and you can do a live chat. Wow, just that I was like, oh, like, you know, that that type of stuff, which we've already done before and what we're building into the back in the back end of this of our TV. So I had the benefit of, of chatting with uh, David last night and then, and uh, even though uh, David brought me to the dance and full disclosure, everybody, I've got seen in the game. Look at that. You didn't want to see me anyway. 
the uh, I said, why in the devil did these guys get together with the studio executive the A and E and actually go down the road with you because you were the enemy at one point? Well, I mean, that's why I got fired so many times. <laughs> <laughs> um, good question. But um, I built a, you know, it's funny. I'm one, I'm one of the few executives that have maintained very close relationships with the talent of the shows that I did. And I think it's, you know, I, I, I've always believed in David what they do. Off a <laughs> huge job. <laughs> yes, I almost pissed in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, I think these guys have a vision, and I'm really good at uh, uh, taking a vision and getting it out there and getting it packaged, and uh, that's what I do. Um, they're doing the work, and I also, I also really believe in this. I mean, I think that that right now, you know, we need these types of communities. I love them. And this, these are the types of communities, these are the type of shows that these guys stand for, the celebration of kind of uh, American craftsmanship and all the rest. Is what exactly what the country needs. It's okay to work with your hands and make shit. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. It's totally and okay. the best shit. And, 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 and the breaks and, yeah, and, and fix stuff. Yeah. yeah. There's already a huge shortage of skilled tradesmen and women in this country. Oh. It's already that way and it's going to yeah. get worse because everybody wants to be a digital creator on social media right now. Everybody wants to be famous. Yeah. You know, I'm, I don't think any of the three of us, we all wanted to. to to be able to sustain our businesses long term, because being in business as long as we have, it doesn't happen. You know, we're we're outliers in that, and so you know, I think for none of us were like, I'm going to be famous. I know I certainly did. I was just like, I was trying to survive, trying to get ahead, trying to make time in my life to do the things I really wanted to do, versus going to work every day and doing what I had to do. I was lucky I was doing it on motorcycle, but you know, that thing is, there's a lot of young, talented, skilled people out there. It's really highly skilled, and we know a lot of them. A lot of them came up watching what we were doing, the shows we were making, but the thing is, it's just like Jeffy was saying, they not they don't have the resources of knowing somebody like Dave and Michelle, you know, or having a connection, you know, that, that, to, to be able to actually bring it from an a concept to a platform like this that was ready to go. And I think that that's the difference is that, you know, we have, you know, like I, I know, what my skill set is, but I also have been connected to a lot of people over the years, maintain those relationships. I mean, how we've known each other for a long time now, and um, and have enough of those components to bring something like this together to actually make it work. And you raise an interesting point. You know, a lot of what television, a lot of what these communities are about, is you know reaching a, a broader demographic. And what's interesting is that the old guys are going to watch because. They they perceive them as you as themselves as you guys. I thought you were going to say real Johnny. But the yeah. young guys are going to watch because you guys, in some ways, are uh, mentors. You know, you're, you're they're excited about that. So we have this broad spectrum of both young and old. Um, and you know that's a that's a powerful community. Look, you guys don't know any about my background, but you know I've taken car cars and never did transmissions, but raced motocross, took all the Mako's down, you know, took took the, the rings out, changed them. You know, and Mary says, "You did you fix that?" And I said, "Yeah, I fixed it. I didn't want to do it, but I did it anyway." Right? Um, so it's, I, I think that that is sort of like um, a missing part with a lot of these people that come up, and that's why they're so befuddled about a lot of things as growing up, aside from all the other stuff that we know does sort of keep them twisting in the wind and you could be nothing better than work with, with your hands, right? Absolutely. That's my wife thinks I'm insane because I took the blender apart yesterday <laughs> and fixed it. I ordered new oil rings for it and I fixed it. Yeah, but thank you. It's like, no, I want to buy a new one. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. At 65 years old, when I was in high school, I remember it was trade schools. You know, they, they would send you to shop. Mm. They would send you to home economics. So you got a little bit of everything. Then it got to a point where they took that out of schools and it was like, you had to go to college. You had to go to college. You had to go to college. And it's like, everybody's lost what they really need to do. And that is working with your hands. Everybody, uh, 
You know, we got two of them. And you're learning from some of the best. And I think this network is going to be absolutely incredible. Yeah, I think so too. Okay. With that, we'd like to show you let's, a video. Let's see if I can make this happen. Let's let's see, uh, let's see if Arthur can hit the right button. Uh, but we oh, want to I show can. you our sizzle reel on Outlaw TV. None of us can take that apart. When you when when you went to high school, did they have like separate rooms, or was all the big um, uh, separate rooms? Okay. Yeah, I we didn't ride horses. <laughs> 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 I think I've always been an outlaw or an outcast. This isn't like a stunt or a prophet. So, you know, what my life is. What culture is, I don't care what you think. I'm going to say what I'm going to say. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And that's what Outlaw TV is about. Kids were watching me when they were 10 years old, 20 years ago. They remember what they watched. They made a better version of that. The nucleus of Outlaw TV has to be the work. Eliminating me the middleman of networks and network type people and now i can just do it i don't have to ask for permission i think people are tired of watching this thing yeah oh, right. and over and over i want to use a new update for guys like me and jesse and paul to show what we can do people never want to see what real people do it's something that kind of been going by the wayside my demographic, Billy's demographic, and Jesse's demographic combined. Collectively, three coming together, putting all of our skill, all of our past, all of our passions, all of our mistakes, everything together, and creating Outlaw TV. People are going to be curious what's, what's going on with Jesse James, what's going on with Paul Scene, you know, what's going on with Billy Lane. What a big difference we can make now because we're we're in the driver's seat on this one we're eliminating the middleman where this is a membership service the people that are paying they're paying for us to do this for them nobody else you'll get a lot of second chances in life and i think oh, yeah. the second chance for all of us not been around a long time but i've done a lot of stuff and, and for me the journey has not even come close to me Outlaw TV belongs to the members more than it belongs to me. I'm just the dancing monkey that's welding shit together so they could look at it. They obviously don't understand how long TV ends. That's it. They just showed you guys three minutes of black. Yeah. They got three minutes of watching us instead of seeing a video. Oh, they didn't see it? Yeah. Whoops. It's the most boring Zoom call ever. It totally sounded good. It's an honorable thing. I'm not going to like fake like a horse. I'm not going to pretend like I'm doing something when I'm not. Boy, we're good. Come on, I'm getting together. Yeah. All right. Shall we continue? All right. Can they see it? So good. Yeah, we did. It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, so if you couldn't see the video, that's because of Arthur. Uh, <laughs> yeah, all your complaints to his way. <laughs> totally. We'll make sure you have the link to it. Actually, we'll put it in the chat box. Um, if you guys have any questions, please serve them up. Uh, I want to talk a little bit more about, um, uh, Paul, when you said we wanted to be what we wanted to be, what exactly do you think that people are looking for that they'll appreciate as being part of this community. Honesty, realism. I think, I think people. I think the uh, after our shows uh, coming up, everything became scripted, and I think the success and just the people, people enjoy the the uh, the realism. You know. This is what's happening. We're not, you know, we're not being cued by somebody or, you know, making that stuff up. I think we just, when you do life just the way you do life, people recognize that. 
And, and what you said was really interesting because it was, you, you felt like you were um, chastised by having to be queued up all that time. And that even though whatever was happening was serving you at the moment, it was not authentic. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, there's going to be filming, you guys are going to be in front of cameras, there's going to be, yeah, how do, how do you, how do you be, how do you go from being cued and knowing that there's a show and you're being uh, filmed, that then there's going to be some editing or something, uh, is it uncomfortable to be authentic? Or is it just no, not perfect? Not at all. And I and I believe this. I think in, in our show or our show do whatever. I think that that was that was the success of the show. Being independent. Um, but you know what happens is that, that you know as time goes by and, and on and on, they take that away from you. You know, and now it becomes they don't ask you what you're doing anymore. They tell you. you know, uh, and that's then you're in a position of who you really are not. And for me, that was the most disturbing part of being on uh, being on TV. You know, not having that choice, and knowing and knowing in your mind that that's not true, that's not real. Um, I had a hard time. With that. Yeah. How about you guys? Did it, was there a point where you just said enough? After every show, <laughs> it's hard because you know you, you develop a relationship. Like I have a different situation than these guys because they had a weekly series. I did a dozen shows over a six-year period, so we would film on like you know a couple a year, and we film and we develop a relationship with the producers and the cameramen and everybody that worked on the set, and then they go away and. You know, several months later, they put a show on, and we had no idea what it was going to be. We had no creative control. We didn't know what it was going to look like, how they were going to portray you. And um, luckily, you know, for me, they did a pretty good job, and people loved it. But I'm, I'm sure, and even with me, but it's, I'm sure uh, your guys, because you're doing so many shows, you know, you when you start out, you don't know what you're doing, and you learn. And as you learn, you want to grow, right? But there's no growth with cable TV. They just want to keep making the same show over and over and over again. And you want to grow as a creator and as a person yeah. and how you present yourself and everything else. And you have no control over that, right? I mean, you know, and for me, that, that, so every time we do a show, I'm like, I'm, I'm over it. I don't want to do it anymore. But, you know, it's, it also had a ton of, there was a magical time in the early 2000s when we started making this, the late 90s and early 2000s. It was a really magical time for guys like us and so we're really lucky to, to be there and be in our craft at our age at that time to really you know see that if you were five years older than us or five years younger than us, you missed the boat. You know, I mean, you know, so we're really lucky, but there, there's no growth there. But here on Outlaw TV, we can grow, we can learn how to do this better every time we make something. And you know, that's one of the things you said about David earlier is you know, he's one of the people you would know when you would deal with somebody from the network or production. If they were just bullsh bullshitting you, or if they were really genuinely listening to you, you know, they might not have been able to do anything about it. But he was somebody that you know you could talk to, and you could tell he was genuine because he was just doing his craft. You know, his craft is just coming together with us. And he was managing up, like he wanted to keep his yeah. job too, even though he tried to throw a lot of people. I, yeah. I, I gave up hoping to keep my job. <laughs> <laughs> I think the well, what is reality TV? Two decades ago, reality TV two decades ago is documentary TV. Right. So basically, you put a camera on a set of sticks, you turn it on, and you just capture what's going on, you know. And I think that is the best kind of TV, and it's the kind of TV and programming that people connect with because I think, yeah, I build stuff that is beautiful and people really like, but I also fuck a lot of stuff up, and I also, you know, it's. And learn from it. No, yeah, but I right? I show it. I'm not yeah. afraid to show it. Yeah. And I think that's what, you know, probably one thing that people have connected with me, you know, the most because I got bills. I've been through terrible relationships. I have parts stuff that I've spent a lot of time on that I just threw in the garbage because it looked like shit. And like that's stuff that everybody goes through. And the evolution of that became a real lazy, expensive way to make 
television. It's multiple cameras, multiple producers, film everything. Okay, Billy's going to the bathroom. Cool, get him in the bathroom. <laughs> no writers are on the set ever. Nobody's taking notes with timestamps. Send a box of tapes to the editor. The editor would go oh, 100 hours of footage. So the editor starts watching it at about 10 tapes through. Oh, I know what's happening. Paul's going to get mad at Junior. So <laughs> you need to have Paul say, if he does that again, I'm out of here. <laughs> and then that that ties together with whatever story the editors yeah. tell. Yeah. And it sounds funny, but that's really what's going on. Like that's really how shows are made now. And I think it's a really lazy, unpatient way to make television. You know, my I worked a few times with a production company that did American Chopper. And I'm friends with Craig, the guy that owns it, or used to own it. We're friends, but I know what he does. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing that shit. Like, I'm not going to fake or say anything. Do we do OTF? No. no. Will you repeat this? No. Yeah. And like the last show that we worked on, we ended it early because he told Discovery I was too hard to work with because I wouldn't do the fake stuff. I won't. I put my foot down. And it's like the nature of this business and this occupation that we've all chose to do is like riddled with drama all the time it doesn't matter what you're doing what and you don't have to create it right what you're making yeah. no but you from a production standpoint you gotta wait it out yeah you know you have to it'll it'll be there and you have to wait it out and you also can't make a big deal of stuff that's not really drama because that's also fake like, oh my god, if UPS doesn't show up, we're never gonna get the spike on the big show. <laughs> <laughs> you know, make it happen. That was the thing with like my first shows, like people learned that like, hey, you can ship shit on Greyhound and it's in the same day to make it happen, you know, like that's and I think that's I think what we all the ace and all of the three of our cans, including David, is like we are have the ability to teach people stuff without them knowing they're teaching so yeah they're just yeah. seeing a guy's life and a shop's life and they're learning all this stuff that not necessarily about welding and fabrication it's just about life you know like hey everybody goes through the stuff that we go through you know we're just the ones that are willing to like put it out there and like going back to that show <clears throat> that i talked about that first show that they're like, oh my god i can't believe you're gonna play this off tv like that's that's the willingness to do that and I think we have, you know, like Billy and I have talked about, like Billy's had, you know, some hard times. He got in trouble. He had to go to jail. He had to do real time and stuff like that. So producing his show, we're going to have to have that tough conversation once with him on camera. But my statement to him is like, you know how many people struggle with drinking, including me, you know, and it's like a... A rare, a rare opportunity to help people. Yeah. 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 You know, and it's like, it's going to be painful and it's not going to be comfortable and it's not going to, you know, but, you know, it's the elephant in the room for his life. We'll do it, yeah. get past it, and go back. To so redemption is a powerful thing that people yeah. have forgotten. Yeah. And, and it's something that is you know, more to the outlaw of our hand is this idea of redemption. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I, I just think it, it, sorry. Where a network, Discovery History, a and &E, all of them, they would, one, they wouldn't even want to do business with him anymore because he got in trouble, you know, which that's strike one. Oh, we don't want to do that because advertisers, they might not like that or whatever. Even though we have who's advertising, we don't, you know, and and I, I think they don't see the, like, the gold, in it, you know. Yeah, the little optic yeah, is, it, is a, a cancellation and, and, and you move on, to and that's thing. another milestone. Yeah. We don't have to ask permission. Yeah, you know, we'll just do it. One of the things I think, as I said earlier, that authenticity is unmistakable. But I think that the the, the population people can recognize. Okay, we all screwed up to a person, right? Absolutely. And so the only thing that matters is what are you going to do next, right? Yeah. Because you can't do anything about that except. Learn from it and adjust, 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 right? So I think that's a, a thing that humanity can accept, right? That, that 
We yeah. all, I mean, we also, we all love a fallen angel. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and that's, that's what human is. That's what humanity is. We, we make mistakes and we come up. And, uh, and I also want to say that, you know, we're really, we're, we're starting this as in a grassroots way. And we're, we're not, you know, we're not trying to go out there and add a hundred and fifty million uh, members. Yeah, and I think, we think that's also important too. Like we talked about the other day, I think starting, there's no harvesting anymore or mining for anything. You know, the internet, anything, everything's a Google search away. So there's no way to like, that, oh, did you hear about that new thing that Discovery Channel did? Oh my God, what is it? No, you'd already know about it because it would have been on like Entertainment Tonight or whatever. And I think this, I want this to like grow from the ground level where it's like people are like, you know, something to talk about. Yeah. And there's nothing like that on TV anymore. Like, you know, there's nothing, I think that like people, oh my God, did you see this thing with Willie Wayne? And like, you know, like, oh, he's like, what's it on? Oh, it's, I don't know, something out on TV, you know, like it's, I think that's pretty rare in our society now. Everything's either like Google or YouTube video and it, 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 nothing is uh, discovered or like, you know, everything is, it's, and I think like with our the money that we're raising our investment, we're not, none of us are getting paid no. and like we're raising just enough money for two years of production for our three shows and a couple documentaries. And that's like, I just want it to be about the content, you know, and about putting all of our money, everything into where the, uh, you know, where it should be. You know, I think if everything's about money and growth and, you know, oh, well, we're gonna do this and that and all that. And it's like all, you're looking at the owners of it right here. It's all of us together. And I think we're all equally investing in it and we're investing our time our likeness, our creativity and everything. And I think that's the recipe for success. I think if you put money in, what well, am I going to get paid? And what is this? If you put that stuff in the forefront, it seems to just always change things. And it'll never live up to your, you know, predetermined expectations. And I just, I, I don't know. I'm excited. I'm trying to contain my excitement about it. <laughs> but I do, timing is right now. Man, I really feel dumb for not doing this like 10 years ago or 15 years ago. Probably wouldn't have. No, no, I don't no, think so. Wouldn't. It would have looked like it was like yeah. writing my fame or something yeah. like that and trying to double dip. But yeah. I think okay. now, now we've like literally let the whole industry lead itself out of talent and shops and all the TV shows, anything of any quality. It's all gone. All the people that all the networks that stomped on our nuts for years gone yeah. like there's really nothing fuckers yeah. yeah yeah and you guys are still here still doing the same thing yeah but that's where the opportunity lies yes yeah. so but I, I wanted to talk about this because this is you know the audience that typically dials into these things that we do are people that are interested in deploying capital and making money yes and so, very simple math our yeah. business model yeah. you know I mean, I think with 100,000 subscribers, which I think is pretty modest, I think we'll be able to pay for everything, pay for ourselves. And you wouldn't have to raise any more money. Yeah. yeah. You know? And so I think that we like limited scalability after that. Yeah. yeah. And but we can talk more about that. In and I think the fun aspect too, which we haven't really talked about, yeah. man, we can do whatever the fuck we want. Like, yeah, yeah, if we want to have Godzilla movies, like you mentioned on Saturday morning, yeah. Right? Yeah. Why, not? Yeah. why not? We have there's this, there's this horrible monster garage knockoff show from Mexico, from Mexico called Mexicanicos. <laughs> yeah. It's like, and I know the dude that runs it, and it's just like it's. It's totally rip off a of monster garage, but I love it. I can't stop watching it. And it's like, okay, like we have a pineapple plantation in Acapulco. We want a huge pineapple shaped bus to like bring tourists into our visitor center. Like, okay, and it's like two black fours and cheap wire and a bongo. They always like make, they always just pull it off like Mexican engineering, man. They just make it happen. I, I think stuff like that to have it. Do a guest spot coming in and out for a week. Fun. Yeah, we're we're stuff that would totally get shot down by a network. Oh, we can't do that or whatever. 
I think we try it and then we put it in for a limited time. And I think that's what the viewer wants to see. Yeah. You know, I think I have a pretty keen eye, all of us do, about yeah. what this potential membership <laughs> member subscriber wants to see. And I think it's stuff like that. So, you know, I, 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 I think there's a demand for it. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think the audience, uh, I was going to say that there's a whole bunch of people that are part of this family office insights group that I'll say. Uh, yeah, if you can't demonstrate what the form is, then I can't do a 13% IR. Well, 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 we don't want this, one, right? Yeah. We want the people that say, it. okay, it, you know, you know, everything can lose money, everything can fail, and everything has an opportunity to succeed. But we're going to have fun along the way, and we can actually be on the ground floor of this, and we can participate. And you know, if you go to Mexico and jump in that pineapple, right? <laughs> Right. That's good. We're not trying. <laughs> we're not trying to lease a big shiny office building. We all run like super lean and mean. Every show I've ever done for Discovery, just my track record, has come in under budget, except for that interaction. <laughs> <laughs> and then Iraq and, and, and more time. So yes, <laughs> and uh, uh, and it, it, we just over deliver. You know, the stuff is like soup. You know, and I I don't like the like the method of making TV like I talked about where it's fake and phony because it, other than being really complicated and lazy, it's really expensive. It like doubles the price of making everything that way. I mean, we had a pretty good crew on our shoot, but for weekly show, we went to have a smaller, you know, and I, I just think it's like, we're not, uh, I mean, you know, we're not naive to the process. Like I like to like do stuff it's, it just comes out. If you try to spend like unlimited amount of money on stuff, it just limits the quality. Too many cooks and, the it, it, and it, it stops the creativity. And one of the things that we do have an opportunity to do is um, there are lots of young people out there who want to make shows and stuff. And we have the opportunity to find some of those young right. people, work with them, mentor them, and put their stuff up on the air. They could never do that even now. I love your idea last night. I don't know if you guys have shared this. Is where uh -oh. each one of you guys uh, mentor somebody and have a little competition. Well, we were thinking about doing that with yeah. the build off, micro build off, yeah, yeah, micro build -off. where we pick three builders to go at it. And then the builder, get, we the builders have like a little quick competition, like a welding or something, yeah. just for you know the first act of the show. And then they get first, second, third pick to pick one of us to mentor. You know, and then so it's not only the builders competing with each other because none of us are going to want to lose. Again. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like a double competition. Like we're going to want our guy to do with that. So we're going to like step in and meddle and, and help him finish the best, you know. Yeah, the, the, the excitement that kind of in the room reminds me of that first time when your parents left you alone and you were just old enough. Yeah, I don't want to talk about that. And all your friends and other things like, shit, they're going off for a week and we have the whole house to ourselves. <laughs> and when my dad did that, I was down. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not <laughs> risky business, right? Yeah, risky business. All right, right let's uh, um, go ahead. You know, when we talk about this, it reminds me of um, the movie Easy Rider a little bit. Um, I was an embryo when Easy Rider came out. <laughs> but before Easy Rider came out, there was movies weren't made that way. Um, you know, it changed the way, especially the American public looked at movies. It was made on a, you know, on a much lower budget than most movies were made at the time. And they didn't have a script. They were ad-libbing it. You know, they were learning, but they had, they had Jack Nicholson. Right? Yeah, and it was Hopper. And Fonda, you know, yeah. I mean, um, and, they, and they made that thing work. And but that took them over 50 years and stood the test of time. And, you know, this is kind of, I think, one of those moments where we can, we can do that for this this generation you know people because their movies aren't really theatrically released too much anymore um and you know everything's going digital and going on platforms and this seems to me like kind of one of those moments where you know instead of being a you know a feature length drama it's you know installments of different things that we're doing but it, it really reminded me of that it's something that nobody's really done um or if they did it it was Done in the old way that it was destined to fail, where this is so different, and that you know all the right elements are coming together, where it has that ability to be something like you know, the writer or what it is, which is something new, refreshing, like nobody's ever seen. Great movie. 
Now, if you want to sign up for Outlaw uh, and get information on it, go to jessejames.com and fill out the information, and you will receive a link that will take you to the sizzle reel. Then you can see the sizzle reel, as yeah. Arthur couldn't do earlier, but uh, you'll be able to see it and sign up for it all at the same time. So <laughs> it's jessejames.com. Fill out and have a good time with it. Check out the sizzle reel. Perfect. So uh, we're going to send everybody that anyway. Thank you, Ed. You have uh, questions? <laughs> any questions? Uh, any questions? Let's see what that is. Does anybody have any questions here? I think as everybody's told us, they couldn't see the sizzle reel. Okay, when are the details of the deal actually available? How much are we raising? Yeah, now we're talking. Yeah, we're talking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. get down to the nitty gritty. All right, let's talk about that. You know, uh, we are lucky to have our attorney Eli Sluter on uh, on the line at the Zoom, as well as Cynthia uh, with Floor Cop Group, uh, our PR firm. Uh, but uh, we hope to go live in first quarter of next year. Uh, our PPM uh, can be sent out to you. Uh, it has all the questions, all the answers, everything you need to know uh, regarding uh, what we want to do, how money's going to be spent, what we're trying to raise. Uh, and you can email me at ed at outlawtv.co and we will get that PPM right out to you. And you don't have to remember that because we'll make sure you send it to you if you missed it. Right, okay. Um, so we'll do all that. Um, we're going to have to wrap it up, but can we just go real quick to wrap up uh, final comments from Ed and right down the line? And if you don't want to say anything, you don't have to. Go ahead. You know, I, I, I feel honored to be a part of Outlaw TV. And this concept, you know, when I was working with Harley Davidson years ago, uh, I'd look up to these guys, all three of them. Uh, and I've worked with Billy, or tried to work with Billy on so many uh, events that I was doing for Harley Davidson. Now to be able in the same room with him uh, doing this project is just an incredible experience. Uh, and from touring everybody's shop, I think you guys are going to be pleasantly surprised of what you're going to see on this channel. Uh, and I'm really, really excited about it. I mean, what excites me is that I'm a programmer and, I, and you program with your gut. And this this particular project, it just everything seems to be coming into place. It's the right time. It's the right people. Um, it's the right concept. Um, so my gut tells me that, and, and, it's, and it's the right approach that we're taking, you know, ground steps that this is this is really exciting. My my um my my spidey sense is telling me that we're on to something. And that sense has served you well um for forty yeah. years or a long time. Some success so. TV shows, most successful reality yeah. shows in, in the business. So we might want to take you seriously. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't seem like he knows what he's talking about, but he actually does. <laughs> I just want to say, you know, I remember when Jesse called me to do Monster Garage, or we came down and saw me after they filmed a bike week about doing Monster Garage. And, and I believed in him, believed in him, and I said yes. And um, I'm sitting here today, you know, so over 20 years later because of that. And then when he called me about doing this uh, right away, you know, I believe in him. Everything he's done is good, except this won't be any different. So um, I'm glad to be here. And, uh, I believe in him, and I know that uh, it's going to be a good thing. I believe in everybody involved. Okay. Yeah, good on the bond. Uh, for me, I think that also it's uh, it's going to be a, a, a new burden. I'm going to be able to learn things so, and then and start uh, and these love guys that. Yeah. Like different in a sense. You know, our show will be a little bit different and whatnot, but I think that, that these both of these guys will offer a lot for me um, that I'll be able to learn from these guys. So, uh, <clears throat> I'm just thankful for the opportunity. I think that kind of like you know, I have a shop, my business, and all that stuff, but I also have, like, TV production. I've produced everything that I've ever been on from day one, and I, I don't think, I mean, maybe it's, like, my ego a little bit in this, where I think, like, I kind of want to get the credit for being a producer and putting stuff together, and I don't think I've ever really, like, 
uh, I think I've done some pretty cool stuff and then really in that now I think that's mostly because the networks kind of talk about any kind of I don't know anything to like shine a light on the people that are on there but I, I don't know I'm just I'm, I'm thankful for the opportunity to like really showcase what I can do and all of us can do with you know no reputation with full of freedom yeah. Freedom's K for sure. That's right. Absolutely. Well, I super appreciate being involved and thank you for allowing me to oh, thank you. like this and otherwise. And uh, again, it's super clear to the group what I've got skin in the game here. So um we want it to be a wild success. And I hope you just make it all the fun shit. Uh, it's gonna be fun, yeah. No matter what, it's well fun. So we want to thank everybody that's yeah, here. Thank you. We have a whole bunch of folks and here in the gallery and Bert for, for letting us come use it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And we want to thank all you guys for joining in. Yeah. And Eli, stay out of the truck stops. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Cynthia, we love you. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. So I always say, thank you for spending with us. The only thing you can't make more of, and that's your time. So it makes sense. Thank you. Yeah.